So nice to see all of you again. Um, I hope you had a nice uh, Thanksgiving and so on, and that you're ready to look into some new topics. Um, this was from last time. What did we talk about last time? We talked about attacking play, right? Anyone remembers what White played at this point? I think I remember myself what uh, what White played. Um, the key move here. I was not here last time. Oh, I see. Yeah, no problem. Uh, is that how they played it? Wow, my memory is, is betraying me here. Uh, G4, says some of you. Yeah, interesting. That would be very topical. I think we concluded last time that if you play G4, it gives Black some chances of counterplay in the center, right? Black would quickly try to take and play something like maybe D5 and try to open up the game. So it, it's not like you can attack... Uh, without uh, any distraction. Now I'll try to do something in the center. I don't know. It's it's an entertaining position. Maybe white is is better here. Yeah, looks interesting. Maybe you could play like that. I'm not sure about G4. It doesn't look really typical, but that doesn't mean that it's a wrong wrong choice. Uh, maybe you could also break in the center, right? This, I think, would be more to the point. No, that looks interesting for black. If they can open up the E file towards white's king, for instance, that could be helpful. Uh, actually, I was here last time since it was two weeks ago. Yeah, nobody was here last week. That's right. In any case, this is the game that we looked at last time. We talked about attacking games. And uh, if I remember this correctly, we were talking about the game where White kept the king in the center and uh, they got a very nice uh, attack. No, that's what we had last uh, Thursday. Let's see if I can find this here in the... Uh, what day is it today? The 30th. So I have to go back to like the the 16th, I think. Yeah, here it is, right? This is the last game that we looked at. Uh, yeah, we will start a new topic today. Yeah, I, I just wanted to refresh your memory about what we looked at last time. So it was an attacking game and maybe there was one single moment. Yeah, D5 they played here. There is one single moment that I would sing, like to, to single out from this game. You remember that White brought, they kept their king in the center so as to avoid any black counterplay with Queen A5 and so on. So the moment I wanted to ask you about was exactly here, right? They played in the game, bishop takes c3 at this point, right? And they got into trouble. Uh, White continued with their attack and so on. But what we were talking about uh, quite a lot last time was why didn't they take like that? And we started analyzing, if you remember, this position. Rook takes h6, queen takes h1, king e2. White is threatening to mate black. So I think this is the position that I gave you as a, as a quiz. And I'll do that again now. So let's see who remembers this. There was a hidden, uh, hidden detail in this position that I think Black in this game did not notice. So you get just 30 seconds because we did this last time, right? D5 is the move coach. Oh, I see. Yeah, you're right. Happy problem. You're, that's, that's true. Okay. So if you said 94, you don't get any points here. You have simply bad memory. It looks very tempting, but... I'll take back, and when you play rook e8, I go bishop e5. We talked about this last time, right? So, who is remembering this, or who can find it right now? If you can find it just like that, well, then congratulations. Hats off, because it's not easy at all. I remember Greg Shahadi was also uh, around when we saw this, and he pointed out the move also. Uh -huh. So, we are talking about defensive play, and that's actually our topic today, but this came from last time but it's applicable here in this case. So 94 is what some of you are saying, trying to create a counterattack along the e-file. The bad news is for you that I will take, and when you give check, I'll play bishop e5, and I'm getting ready to attack now. Let me know if I'm missing something, but I think this looks dangerous for... Oh, I'm missing the chat. That's what I'm missing. Add to room, baby huggy. Yeah, that's a funny name. All right, baby huggy, you're welcome. Yeah, you're right, L008 and happy pawn. You have both noticed what this was about. Aha, exactly. So this was very, very dangerous. The right course of action here. Uh, okay, I'll ask, ask L then. All right, L, since you seem to remember this, please let me know. Uh, how should black defend? Aha, F5 and the little detail that I think that Darda with the black pieces missed in this game was this move. But why on earth should black give away a pawn like that? Well, that's why defensive chess is difficult. You have to look into tiny details. You have to understand what your opponent would like to do. Now, as you can see, if I give check on uh, g6, the king will go to f8. And very fortunately, the bishop is 
covering the d6 square, which it didn't do in the game. For the game, just think that they have traded on c3, which meant that, yeah, black was completely lost. Uh, if we don't include the move c4, if we play like L said straight away, you can simply see here the difference that, yeah, we looked at this last time, right? And we said that this was devastating. I think uh, queen e6 was what, what you said to me last time, and there were big threats like, like that. So, yeah, Greg pointed out this idea last lesson, says happy pawn. Exactly. That's what happened last time. So, okay, it was not easy to see this. So, especially since black had to see this from afar. So, basically, you could, you could say uh, defensive play, uh, defensive play, has a lot to do with tactical alertness. It's a lot about tactics, but uh, often about the, the opponent's tactics, right? Often about the opponent's, I'll write that with capital letters, tactical uh, ideas. So you have to see through what your opponent has in mind. You have to notice that, oh, he would like to play bishop d6. So that's why I give up this pawn. I don't need a pawn. I'm, I'm, I'm a rook up, so I don't care about that. What I need is to prevent the move bishop d6 so that it doesn't come with check. So that's not easy for anyone, and that's why defensive chess is, is difficult. So that's what we're talking about here. Yeah, welcome everyone again to a uh, defensive idea. I think we will do maybe three or four installments on this topic. Um, and I will start with, uh, yeah, I, pr I will promise to not do this again, but I'll show one of my own games from a million years ago. Let me show you. Uh, this could have happened in the game. I was playing back uh, back in 1989. Um, Iceland. I hope you know where Iceland is on the map. Anyone? Where is Iceland? Like briefly talking, where where would you place Iceland next to Greenland? Well, so so not exactly. Mm -hmm. Scandinavia says Kirutori. Europe says Osomoven. Yeah, good thinking. It's a little island in the north of Europe, says L0. Yeah, I think that's a good uh, good expression. Uh -huh. It's a very important place for chess because that's where they had this match, uh, Fischer Spassky, no, back in 1972. And then there have been many nice events. It's a chess-loving country. I think it's one of the countries with the smallest population, which has still managed to produce quite a number of grandmasters. So anyway, this game was played in... Uh, oh, I, I visited there. Okay, nice. Fisher rest in Iceland, says Happy Fun. Africa, says JM Chess. I'm sorry, uh, that's not Africa. <laughs> I'm afraid Iceland. That's quite the opposite. It's in, in the other direction. Never mind. Let's come back to the chessboard instead. Uh, this is a position which could have uh, occurred this game. And I wanted to ask you if Black plays at this point. We will look at this from White's perspective. Like, you will be my opponent here in this game. And my question to you is, when black plays here, bishop c5 check, what do you think white should play? So I will make this a little quiz. It's not very difficult. I'll only quiz you for three moves. You get one minute. All right? Take your time. Take your time, guys. Don't send me anything right now. Send me the moves when you're down to, like, 20 seconds, okay? We're not playing bullets here. You still have some time to, to think. You have basically three legal moves, so you met, better make a good choice from those three legal moves. Okay? In the middle of nowhere, says so random. Yeah, don't say that to the Icelanders. They will take it as an offense. Uh, Yugoslavian Berserker, you're on, right, on the right track. I like your move. I wonder what you play against D4 uh, Yugoslavian Berserker. That's why I put the queen on C6, by the way. Uh, don't do that, uh, Owen and Kiritori. Um, Connor and Hollow Blade, I can, I can forgive you for that, but uh, don't forget that you're inviting my rook to the place. Aha. Okay, L, we have a winner. Congratulations. Uh, maybe there is somebody else who can find this. Was it so difficult? Really? Maybe there are other options here. Knight C3 says Ryan the Greatest. What do you do against D4? Ryan. Oh, I think I know what you have in mind there. Interesting. Yeah, JM Chess and uh, and uh, Ryan, you have very interesting ideas. Aha. And uh, L was the only one who who coincided with, with my with my variation. But let's ask uh, because it's interesting. What? Uh, yeah. What? Uh, Happy pawn also an interesting move in the end. Yeah, giving back material. That's typical when we talk about uh, defensive chess. But okay, I won't uh, take any risks here. I will just ask L again. Uh, please go ahead, El. So show us where should the king go. Aha, the king should go that's, to that side. We should, of course, look very briefly at the alternatives. So 
I just wanted to say, often in defensive situations, uh, we can use, we can use, exactly, yeah, you're right. We can use the process of elimination, which you are familiar with, right? From other situations in life and so on, the process of elimination. We have three legal moves here, bishop f2, king f1 and king h1. And before we really uh, dig into the, the concrete um, consequences of king f1, we can actually first discard the other moves. We, we can reject the other moves. So bishop f2, that's of course very easy to uh, to reject because we're hanging the pawn on on uh, on h2. But how would black take that pawn? Anyone? Would you like to tell me uh, how would black continue here? Very very simple. I expected more people to fall for exactly. We will come. Okay, you're right. Uh, Ryan and Brian and Chess Vedant and Kirotori and Marcus. Of course, knight f3. And this is the end because the queen is arriving at at h2, right? If bishop takes, queen takes, it's it's over here. Aha. Uh -huh. So uh, that cannot be played. Bishop f2, that's what many of you saw, of course, that that's not a good idea to play bishop f2. I mean, they could also take and, and take on h2, and it would also be be a headache for us, but even more precise, of course, to play knight f3 first. So that can be forgotten about. But then the other candidate was important to look at, king h1. Aha. Uh -huh. Hollow blade, we kids are sharp in tactics. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so hollow blade, yeah, you can tell us very briefly, hollow, you can tell us how would black continue in this line? Why is this not a good move? Exactly, queen takes g3. That's a pretty mate, right? It's a pretty mate that will come up here. Not the mate that we were expecting. I would say quite an unusual mate. And you can say it's the kind of perfect mate in terms of economy because there is one piece covering every square, right? And there is even a white pawn helping to complete these two pawns, to complete this mating picture. So that's why we should not play king uh, h1. So having seen these two very short variations, bishop f2, knight f3, king h1, queen takes e 3 it's of course easy to settle for this move, king f1. No matter what happens next, we know that this must be the least of evil. It's a puzzle rush, mate. <laughs> yeah, maybe you're right. So puzzle rush, now they have a new, new combination that they can use if they like. So anyway, what did I play here in my variation? I played queen c6. Yeah, let's go back to L. Uh, you can show us, L, what was your move here at this point? You played something very solid. Aha, bishop d3. What happens here is that L has noticed my evil plans. I didn't put the queen on c6 by coincidence, not only because it was attacked. Of course, I'm about to play d4 and try to bring in the queen in one way or another. So here you have a few different choices here. Some people wanted to take like that. I don't like this move. I would, I will leave that to the very end. It's like inviting the thief to our house, right? Taking down. The bishop was a very strong defender. Now I would like to keep him down for a little longer if, if possible. Uh, so yeah, that should be avoided. But we had a few interesting moves here. So some of you were moving the knight to c3 and to d2. Knight c3, I think it's interesting because those who said this move they probably had an evil tactic prepared here, right? Anyone? Aha, 94, exactly. That must have been the idea of those who said this. So you see, tactics like for the defending side, we're using some cheap tactics to uh, to prevent the queen from landing at h1. So I think this was also possible, knight c3. Somebody said knight d2. I don't like it so much uh, due to the... I don't know, like it seems like it's blocking the other pieces, but... That could be okay also. Yeah, that could be okay. I can't see like a big... Bishop e3, I thought, yeah, maybe you could play bishop e5. Oh, you're right, guys. You're right. It's 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 a check on b5. Yeah, yeah, good point, of course. Knight is two teams passive. Yeah, especially if they can play bishop e3 and play d4. Aha, the friendship of bishop and pawn, right? Here we are again. I think we had this in some other lessons. So, yeah, this is uh, not so good. Knight c3, but knight c3 looks okay, right? I think this one can be can be accepted. Uh, knight f5, yeah, maybe, maybe. So maybe this is the practical as aspect. No, maybe the computer can tell you that white is fine here, but for for the human eye, it's it looks a little nasty that the queen is still like touching these squares. So uh, I don't know. Bishop d3 is what I would play here probably. If I had this position with white, I would just give away the the, the I would give back the piece or something like that. But uh, I think this bishop it's like a dragon bishop, right? It will help my king for the rest of my life here if, if they give check and I come here and you can give check. And yeah, I think the king is safer than ever now, right? So the f-file has opened also. Yeah, oh, I see, I see. So you, you mean that I'm in trouble here? I don't think so, no? Or, or what? Queen g5? For white, you mean? Aha, counterattack coming up. Yeah, rook f8, uh, or you can, if you want to be funny, you can castle also. But I don't think I'm in big trouble here. 
Correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe I'm, oh, I'm blundering Rook F1. You were right. Good thinking, good thinking. So I think who was right in the very end here was L, who said that we should not play a knight C3. We should just play this simple move, bishop D3. All right, let's come back to this bishop D3. So I think you're right, L. This is a much more practical approach. Now for sure, D4 is going to be met with bishop E4. Aha. You can just go king H1. No, you can't, right? As we saw here. Bishop d3, f5. Yeah, I mean, we can analyze forever, Chess Vedant. We can analyze forever. If you play f5, yeah, it's it's interesting to analyze, of course. But from a practical point, I'm just telling you, Chess Vedant, if you have this position on the board, you should not, at this point, occupy yourself with analyzing what happens after king f1, queen c6, bishop d3, f5. You just know that I have to do this, and it's easier to analyze the position on the board once it's the same position, right? You don't have to blindly analyze it, if you see what I mean. It's actually better to play out these moves, also from a time time perspective, right? To to save time on the clock. So, oh, sorry, I think I, I got it wrong, no? Uh, like this, and now f5, right? To play d4 and prevent bishop d4. So, let's see, all moves forced. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't say that, but uh, maybe, yeah, maybe. So, let's see, if f5, d4 is coming next, white should try to uh, somehow... So make these squares more solid. Yeah, what could I what could I possibly play here? Yeah, many things come to mind here. This pawn also appears to be a little weak. Uh, Queen g5 says so random. Yeah, I guess L was going to play this anyway, right? But maybe nothing happens here. Maybe we can just take and the brave king. We will come to the brave king here also at some point. Maybe not today, but in in the later later occasion. Why can run with the king? No, the escaping king or the running king or the brave king. Call it whatever you like. I think. Uh, White is okay here, right? After queen g5. Looks safe. I think this is good for white. Can you just take the pawn? Which pawn? I don't follow. Yeah, I think we can probably conclude this example here, right? It's very entertaining to analyze and so on, but from white's perspective, we can safely say that after bishop c5, we should go king f1, and then the details, we can sort them out on the way. But we have managed to, to uh, reject these two moves, the process of elimination, you could say. All right. I wanted to tell you actually something else about this game. This didn't happen in the game, and I wanted to give you like the the story about how how the position came up because there is something more to this. So let me uh, show up the what happened in the game, right? How did we arrive there? Yeah, I was yeah very young at back then, at like thirteen years old or something. So uh, my level was not very high, but it was an inter interesting game. Uh, so I played a Karo Khan with black, and I ended up like this. You can see that. White did not treat the Karokan in the best possible way. I'm very happy to have the H file open. Uh, no, I was. I did not have a title at that time. I was th 13 years old. No, absolutely no title. What was your opponent's rating? I don't know. Uh, maybe like 1600 or something. Yeah, we were not very high rated. So you can probably find many interesting moves here. Anyone, just for fun, which move do you like for black here? I agree, Hollow Blade. Yeah, bishops. The game, I think it's not published anywhere. Yeah, no, it, it was the Nordic uh, Youth Championship back in 1989. I think my opponent is from Norway. Uh, Bishop c5, that's one of the best moves. I think the computer said that move. g5, that's a very typical move. I was not very acquainted with all the plans. For instance, I didn't know that in the Karakan you could castle long in some such positions. I would usually castle short. But okay, I went for the most tactical approach here. And I played. Yeah, exactly, L. I played knight takes e5. So L is like Sherlock Holmes. He has noticed that this would actually lead to the previous position, but it's honestly, it's not a very good move. Sometimes this might have happened to you also, that you attack because everything seems like very convincing, but there must be, there might be a problem with this. So I made a mistake. I shouldn't have played this. You can see my point, right? To take with the queen and double attack at e h2 and, and e2. Especially if you're a 13-year-old, this, this is very tempting, right? Uh, even if nowadays, yeah, you have grandmasters, uh, age 13 and so on. But anyway, I played knight xe5. I should not have done that. One good move was g5. Another good move was bishop c5 and so on. But okay, I got a little carried away. Exactly. 13-year-olds love to love to attack. So anyone, what do you think white played here? And he found it. My unrated or lower-rated opponent, he found white's best move here. Tactical magician says bishop b6. I'm afraid... Uh, I have bishop c5 then, right? And just for any everybody's information here, uh, this will never be a safe place when the h file is open. This mate, I don't know how you call it in the US, but it's a famous mate, right, in, in such positions. Yeah, knight g3, exactly. Is there a name for this, anyone? 
I must say I, I have seen it many times, but uh, maybe there is no more. Smothered mate. All right. Let's call it a smothered mate then. So bishop e6 does not work, but he found the right move here. He found the right move. There is something with it which I call making space, making space. All right. Exactly. Hollow blade. Making space. Oh, you said that. Uh, exactly. It's something which is, is about freeing squares, freeing squares for our king. You might be surprised to see how often this happens in practice, how useful this concept is. So he played g4. I mean, apart from the fact that he's threatening a second knight, it's also useful to clear a square for his king at some occasions. So he found that. He found g4. And uh, I, I must admit that I did not uh, expect this, no? So I was, let's see, from my perspective here again. So, uh, yeah, I was in trouble here. I was in trouble here. I played and moved knight h4. So anyway, computers can say one thing and you know at the board is a different thing. It's almost always more difficult to defend than to attack. When you attack, you still have some uh, flexibility. You can uh, do this and you can do that. But when you defend, usually options are limited and, and disaster is always around the corner. So always difficult to defend in over the board. But for the computer, it's the same thing, of course. So don't, don't get uh, fooled by that. No, the, uh, defensive play is more difficult for sure. So knight s4 was played and uh, here he made a mistake. Here he played uh, f takes e5. And now I took... No, that's what he didn't play. No, he played... Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. He must have played in the game. He played bishop e6. Yeah, he played tactical magician's move. And I found it also 35 years ago or something. I found the move bishop c5. I found it back then also. And I went on to win this game. He was in big trouble. You can see that after king h1, bishop takes. This was a good move by black because now we have tactics coming up here. So anyway, uh, let's come back. Let's come back. Also, you cannot take here this is very ugly to take like that you get a very strong attack you have basically the yeah it's it's, it's horrible for black right this is hanging for white it's hanging and bishop c5 is coming so what do you then think that we should play with with white here after uh knight h4 now we will look at this from white's perspective so we just concluded that this is not working and that is also not working so i will quiz you for white don't send the message don't send the solution to the chat please keep it for yourself and you will show it to me here in the in the quiz window. All right. Let's see if I can get this right. Something like that. All right. This one is a little more complex. So take your time. Take your time. Don't send me any moves right now. Don't send me any moves. And uh, I can give you one hint for starters. Whenever somebody sacrifices against you, the first thing to check is the acceptance of the sacrifice all right i'm not telling you that you should accept the sacrifice but i'm telling you that you should check that option okay i hope you can see the difference you should have a look at that possibility of accepting um yeah don't play that alg don't play that yugoslavian you're missing my cheap tactic you get mated in or oh, well you're probably getting mated yeah in a few moves okay we will talk about this maybe i missed something um Let's see here. Happy pawn and kind King Sam. I think you're running into the same tactic as we just had, no? Or, or no? All right. We will we will look at it. We will look at it. Maybe I, I missed something. That's highly, highly possible also. Uh -huh. Okay. So let's see who got closest here. Yeah, this was a tricky one, I can see. Uh, maybe there are some... Some things that we will have to straighten out. So, Hank, you're very, very close, and so is Daniel. Um, yeah, I'll I'll check with Hank because that's a good uh, that's a good solution. So, please go for it, uh, Hank. Tell us what do you think uh, White should play here. First thing to check: the acceptance of the sacrifice. Now, when I take, we can see that there is the threat of knight f3 and queen takes e2. And here we are again, right? Here we are again about. Exactly, making space, making space. We will come back to this, but I, I would like all of you to to remember this. Uh, maybe you have a different name for it, but uh, rookie one. It's basically designed to provide the king with a square on f1, so that if black sacks at this occasion, on this occasion, you can just safely move over the king to the other side. So I won't play like that, of course. Uh, so after rookie one, which Hank said, I'll just go back with the queen. And now you can see that we're getting closer to our exercise, right? Because if you now play bishop g3, 
you end up in our variation, right? You end up in our variation. So some of you probably thought that, oh, we should just get back to the previous position, but that's actually wrong. As we said here, it was still a tricky position. Bishop d3 is what I think uh, L said, and we were discussing maybe f5. I think also knight f3 was an interesting move here first, right, to uh, improve the knight, and also we avoid queen, queen g3 and so on. And white could go rook e2, and I don't know what black would play here. Maybe you could even, like, castle and and try to continue the attack in, in, in one way or another, no? But uh, there was something better for white. There was something better. So let's check again. Okay. Today's topic, you came a little late, uh, Sarthak. We're talking defensive ideas today. So we have checked some ideas already, like the process of elimination, making space. Um, so rookie one, I went back with the queen, and I think what Hank played here was queen g5, right? Hank, that was your move, queen g5. So... Not fully convincing because I could probably play bishop e7 and you'll have to move that queen anyway, right? Rook a3, that's a very inventive move. When, uh, who was this? Uh, L and Rohan, they say this? No, L said rook a3. This is what we call giving back material. Please notice, we will come back to this. Uh, that's a very good defensive idea also. But I don't think it's strictly needed on this, on this occasion. I don't know. I will probably take and... Um, I can't make this work yet, right? So maybe it's time to just castle and or, or try to find a way to bring in more pieces to the to the attack. Um, or maybe, yeah, knight g2. Is that possible, by the way? Did, did anyone say that? Or that's silly. Maybe that's a silly move. I was just thinking that if I carry out the idea like this instead, you have a slight problem with the king, right? Because you don't get to the safer side, right? I can see some tactics like queen h3, like puzzle rush tactics. That's what you call it, right? Uh, bishop g3. When can you play? Yeah, yeah. this is also not convincing, right? I have rook h3 and it's like smelling mate here. Uh -huh. So maybe knight g2 could be a, a tricky tactic here. Knight g2. Bishop g3. Oh, I see. You can play like that. So maybe it didn't work after all. I see. I see. Maybe we have that for the future then. It didn't pay off on this occasion, but we can maybe play it at some other stage. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure about what Black would play. By instinct, I would just like to castle here and bring in my other rook to the to the battle, but maybe that's not, not the best. So, yeah, complex, complex game. Uh, rook a3, definitely half a point if you play that. Uh, rook a3, definitely half a point. Um, interesting. Yeah, I'm not completely sure what, what would happen. Maybe I can take that pawn also. I can be materialistic and take this pawn. Should I do that, maybe? Take that pawn. Like... Like this. I don't know. It could be good for something, no? <laughs> to take it while waiting for you to do something. Very greedy. Yeah, maybe. But uh, at the same time, I'm improving my queen a little also. Uh, I'm clear, I would say. I'm clear. But there was a better move. What about queen e3 on move 2? Yeah, thanks for, uh, for telling me. If you play queen e3 on move 2, then you have to look at knight f3. Some of you wanted to play this. I guess your idea was to play king g2. But can't I just take on h2 and... Yeah, wake me up if I miss some some tactical detail here. But this looks disastrous, or no? Oh, and move or queen h2. Was that possible also? Oh, you're right, uh, Troy. You can take like that also. And I think we had this recently. Yeah, that's that's cleaner, of course. We're mating them. So queen e3 cannot be so good on move two. So you're telling me on move three instead. Uh, all right, but then maybe knight e2 is is an option, or no? Or I'm getting confused here. Can I do that? Or maybe I cannot do that. No, you're, you're keeping track of, of... Oh, I see what you mean. So this is not playable because you will then take and you can play king h1. It's, it's and you, I don't have that. Is, is that what you mean? I mean, this is also coming, no? I don't know. Those of you who are good with puzzle rush tactics, you will probably play knight bishop c5 here. Uh, yeah. Queen g3 maybe. Yeah. I think not maybe. <laughs> I think definitely you have to play like that. And uh, can anyone tell me what's going on here? I, I don't know. Uh, but I would be a little scared with, uh, with, with white here in this, in this position. What Bishop takes f2 says storage chess. Yeah, that, that's definitely a candidate move. I guess they will trade queens and move the rook. How many pawns do you have? You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You have three pawns already. So I guess it cannot be bad, right? It cannot be bad to do something like that. And yeah, put your bishop somewhere or... Looks nice for, for black. Nice combination. And compensation, sorry. Maybe king is seven and bring in the other rook or something. Uh, bishop takes f2. Intermezzo. Oh, uh, when did that happen? Uh, 
what is the solution? Bishop e5. I don't understand, Troy. You will have to tell me. Oh, instead of queen g3, bishop e5 here. That's a very clever intermediate move. So that when I take, you can take back and suddenly you have freed the square for your king. Yeah, I like that way of thinking. Uh, looks promising. Now you have a distinct material advantage also. So I think my whole idea, it, it didn't pay off, no? But it was important to see this move, bishop uh, b5. Very nice. So maybe I can do something else here with black. Uh, queen e3. Yeah, definitely half a point if you if you said that. No, it it looks very interesting. Uh, in any case, yeah, I don't know how could we possibly uh, improve this line with black. Bishop d6 comes to mind also. No, simple developing move and attacking the pawn and so on. Uh, we have some kind of positional compensation. No, even if they, if they took and we would take back and so on. Um, I don't know. I kind of like black's position here, but maybe it's because I. <laughs> I played this game in the first place. Yeah, bishop g3, maybe you're right. Aha. Uh -huh. I don't know. I don't know what's what's going on. Could I even like fix fix a weakness or fix my knight or, by playing g5? But uh, you might be right that this is not fully fully convincing. It's not as convincing as you would like it to be. Um, maybe I can go like e5 also, no? And I have bishop c5 or or no? Yeah, and this was a, the game was played a million years ago. So, yeah, no, if you're telling me black is playing badly, no no offense, of course. <laughs> I think black still has some fun in this in this game. Rook a3. Yeah, I, I don't understand that move if I go bishop c5. I must be missing something here. Or is it some kind of counter-sacrifice or, or what? Yeah, I don't know. Tricky, tricky game, tricky game. But there is a better move. There is a better move that nobody said. So I will quiz you instead. I will quiz. This is the computer's move. That I will quiz you for here. Um, it's extremely clever. That's why it's the computer's move, right? So the computer has something to say about this, which will bring us to another defensive idea, okay? There is one golden defensive idea. Golden defensive idea, and I call it mobilization. Mobilization. Bringing pieces to the defense, all right? As simple as that. We have a winner here, 206 found this. Uh, anyone else? Marcus, Yugoslavian, maybe with my little hint, it became simpler. Now, Brian also found the Chess Vedant, another winner here. Aha, Bishop D1, some of you wanted to play. That's a strange move, Bishop D1. Why would you play like that? Like Fisher Random? Uh, well, we will, we will talk about that. Okay, we have a bunch of winners, 206. I think you were fastest, so please go ahead. This time, it's not my move, it's the computer's move, 100%, but I really like it. Aha. 92. That's a pretty move. Bringing the knight to the golden defensive square. They say knight on F. I think we talked about this last time. No, knight on F8. Uh, no mate. That's how you say in, in good English, I think. So knight D2. And I can't. This tactic, for instance, it's not working anymore, of course. And if I try to trade off the bishop, like the aggressive exchange, we can let them take instead. This is a beautiful move. Beautiful defensive move. Covering all those uh, weak squares, if I take like that and I give this feeble check, what would you play here, of course, uh, 206. And that, by the way, we come to another knight on, oh, knight on f8, there is no mate, of course. Yeah, sorry, uh, bad, bad English, not knight on, what would you say with the knight on f1 then? How would you say in English? Knight on f1, no, no fun for the opponent, maybe, yeah, no, not really. Exactly, says Vedan. So queen e3, that's another important method, defensive exchanges that's what we call this when we try to trade off their their attacking pieces of course they can play something like d4 and maybe you could i don't know could you insist with queen with queen a3 but i like white's position better now this is like a goalkeeper no this knight is like a goalkeeper keeping track of some important squares in the position and so on so uh, yeah yeah i don't know about that oh, the every time i type queen e3 it changes to what three maybe you have some kind of grammar grammar check on your on your computer. Yeah, I don't know. But in any case, what I do know, this is uh, what we should play here. 92. Extremely clever move. We're bringing more pieces to the defense. If by chance you're practicing other sports like, let's say, soccer or basketball and so on, you know this kind of thinking. No? Bring bring the people to the to the part of the uh, of the battle where, where there is something going on, right? To the heat of the battle, you would say. So that's the same thing. The knight would like to go there. It's a little like Rook A3, uh, just, uh, who said this move? Else move, no? So, yeah. Anyway, 
Uh, what uh, what else to talk about here? You had some other moves that you were saying here. Bishop d1 was proposed by some people. Yeah, interesting move. I guess the point was to clear the the file for the rook. By instinct, I would play the same move as the as the computer did last time. But then I guess your point was that you would take and you would play queen e3. Is that so? Those of you who said uh, bishop d1, was that your point? To clear the square, maybe? Yeah, Torrid says... Uh, agrees on that. So I guess maybe black should do something else here. Yeah, I don't know. Bishop d6, is that making sense? By comparative analysis, if you looked at knight d2, you could see that if bishop d6, safe to say, white would then play knight f1, right? And the knight is, is in the battle, uh, as somebody said here. But if you play bishop d1, you're actually you're moving a player who was already in the battle. So uh, maybe I should just continue to work on the door squares. So maybe, yeah. I would be sweating a little here with white, I think, in this position. I, I feel like there is a defender missing or something. That, that rook, that would have been great to have it on that side and so on. So anyway, that's what I wanted to show you in this in this example. So basically, long example, uh, knight xe5 was not necessary. Young young player got overexcited about this position. White found the correct move, g4, knight h4, trying to make the, uh, the combination work. White, uh, yeah, got confused and, and lost the game, but they should have taken the sac sacrifice. So acceptance of the sacrifice, that's very important. We will come back to this also. Uh, after queen takes um, e5, we have to find this crucial move, rook e1, protecting the bishop, but even more importantly, uh, creating a square for the king on f1. So queen c7 was what I think I was intending back in those days. I kept some notes. I think I just wanted to play bishop uh, c5, and especially what I wanted, of course, was to avoid my opponent's evil trick, bishop b5. And here, as we could see, the unexpected move, you could say knight d2, but very, very reasonable in a defensive context to bring the knight to to h2. Uh -huh. And white was clearly better, as at least according to Mr. Stockfish. Okay, we will continue. Let me take something else. Defensive thinking, you can use it at any moment of the game. We are looking at some kind of opening position, but I wanted to show you from the end game, all right? I'll show you a tricky position. Let's see if you can get this right. You're playing with the white pieces. Uh, it's not very difficult, so I will only give you... Uh, let's see here. I'll only give you... Uh, yeah, how much time? One minute, maybe. Okay, so try to save this. They couldn't do it in the... In the game, but I'm sure you can. In this game between with the white pieces, Kalav, Kalavanan and playing black Sedostam. That's uh, from my country, I can see from the last name. Uh -huh. HDI chess, we have a winner. Congratulations. Uh, I think that's not a good idea, Yamiyoki. I think that's what he played in the game, actually. That's what uh, white, unfortunately, played in the game. So we have a lot of losers here, unfortunately. Uh, I won't name you, no? But you, you move too fast also. That's that's a crime. In a difficult position like this, please don't send me king c1 in, in 10 seconds. Don't do that. Okay? Try to see through what your opponent has in mind. Uh, HDI Chess, L, Yugoslavian Tactical, Rohan, JM Chess. These are the six winners so far. I'm afraid no uh, second uh, choice on this occasion. There is only one way to, to make this work. K Kiro Tori, you got it. Also, smart goldfish, you just made it. So please go ahead, uh, HDI Chess. You can tell us what should white play. Aha, Rook B2. Our favorite method, well, I won't say favorite, but uh, important method. We are actually clearing a square for our king. Please notice that's the main point of this move, to make it possible to sneak away with the king. And also you could say, of course, that uh, I usually tell students, especially younger students, king and rook, they are, are like cat and dog uh, in the end game. They don't like to stick together. They prefer to be far away from each other, especially since the rook is it's obstructed by the king. So it doesn't like to be close to the king. That's The knight likes to be cl close to the king. King and knight is it's great. King and knight, a great defensive Construction. We actually had this uh, right in, in the previous uh, example. Uh, hang on, uh, HDI. We will be, come back to you in just one moment. Uh, let me just see very quickly. We had this in the previous one, right? Let's see. Where are we? 
here, right? So we actually had this in this in this example. Knight takes e5, g4, knight h4, pawn takes, queen takes, rook e1, queen c7. You might not have noticed, but we actually had this construction here after knight f1. Um, the king just loves to have the knight close to it. It's keeping track of many squares around the king, and it's protected by the by the king also, right? So anyway, that was just something to to remember. Now back to uh, yeah, back to who was this? HDI chess. So HDI said rook b2. All right, HDI. I go rook h2. Aha. And after king c1, I'll try something like that. But uh, yeah, no way to fool HDI here. Of course, we're going back. All these are only moves, I'm afraid. Uh, yeah, you could definitely not go to the corner. In that case, you're getting mated, of course. So we have to stay like that and black maybe they would have been winning uh, with some other piece somewhere else like in, with the king on d3 it would be mate and so on but it's not and they don't have the time to make this work we can always come back and at some point if i played something like king c4 for instance what would you play here um, hdi what comes to mind in many end games what happens after king e1 yeah we will come to that uh, troy boy we will come to that I'm just waiting for HDI to help me out here. Anyone would like to help out? Uh, oh, you go back with the king. Yeah, I wouldn't do that, but uh, you can you can do that also, of course, if if you like. But uh, I think a safer choice here is to put the rook. Yeah, where should the rook be? Very quickly, anyone, so that we can move on. Wow, something happens with the chat. I can't see it. Yeah, rook b8 says happy pawn. Exactly. Yeah, thanks. Rook b8 in this way. We can put the king down here. They, they are one move away from mating us, but that won't happen, right? We have the rook in the back. That's the best place for the rook. So basically, this is the only move you can play. You have absolutely no other choice. In the game, they played uh, rook uh, c1 instead. No, sorry, that's that's also a terrible move, of course. Uh, you would play rook check, right? And it, Am I... <laughs> sorry if I missed something here, but I think you're winning here also, right? King, King D3. Yeah, the end games are always tricky, but I think White is done here, right? White is done. Yeah, you can't play like that. Aha. Uh -huh. So in the game they played King C1. Okay, just for fun, just to see if we're all on the same page. Could you tell me very quickly how did Black? Oh, sorry. How did Black take home this game? I don't think it'd be very difficult. Maybe you remember some time ago we had a topic called. Um, Attacking with a small army. Anyone remem remembers that, maybe? We look looked at mates in the endgame and so on. So try this out, please, if you like. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody found this. Yeah, this was not difficult. Uh -huh. Very nice. Troy Boy, Smart Goldfish, uh, Marcus, uh, Sui Random, Mr. Chicky Dude. And, uh, and so on. And some people wanted to give a check just to show who's the boss. Yeah, you can do that also, Yugoslavian and Holo and Tori and so on. You can do that. But uh, faster what Alg played here. Please go ahead, Alg. Show us how does Black win here by force. And this is how the game... Uh, yeah, that's not what you meant, right? That's how the game went. Uh, that's exactly what happened. Uh, my counterman, he took home this game. He saw the little mating combination. Again, you can see White's rook is in the wrong place. It should have been on this side of the board, of course. And now there was no way to defend against this, as you can see, if I play something like rook b2, king e1. Yeah, we will come to that, Troy boy. I saw your uh, comment. Yeah, exactly. We will come to that. So, yeah, thanks, uh, Al. That's what happened in the game. This misfortune misfortune happened because white didn't free a square for the king. This was absolutely only move. Even if it comes a little unnatural to us to play like that, and like, oh, no, they have a skewer and so on. But... You can't uh, be too emotional when you defend, right? You need to keep a, a cool head. So, yeah, king e1 is not a good idea for the same reason, I think. I will just play rook check, and if you come back, I think we have a mate on d1, right? And if you go up, you lose the rook instead. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, you can also play rook a1. You're right. You gain time. Yeah, whatever you like. Uh, it, it's a free country and so on. In any case, bottom line here, you have to free some space for the king you have to play rook b2 and it also shows you that in the end game the margins can be really narrow when it comes to to defending all right i hope you're ready for another little uh, challenge here 
Uh, let's see if I can get this right. It's a tricky position, so please be careful, okay? Please be careful. You're playing with the white pieces, and in this interesting game, black just played the move knight hf4. So this is a little about what I call detecting the threat. Detecting, detecting the threat. So what does that mean? Well, basically, we're trying to see through what our opponent has in mind. So you can tell yourself. You don't have to write it in the chat. What does black want to do here? I know there is a move that you will say instantly, but are you sure that's the threat? Once we, you see the threat, once we see the threat, uh, let's see, the real threat, I would say. The real threat? Yes, silence, please. Uh, once we see the real threat, uh, it becomes uh, easier to find the right defensive solution. Okay, I won't say anything more. Uh, I will simply quiz you for the right solution. So once you have seen through the threat, you can imagine what you should do in this case. Um, and you will be able to save half a point in this game. Nice, no? You can save half a point. So you get for this mission one minute. Okay, there are two solutions, but there is one which is nicer than the other. I'm very sorry, Yugoslavian, JM Chess, Kwoki Kirotori, HDI, Mr. Chicky Dude. You did not, I think, see the right, the real threat. You saw the threat of knight g3 check. That was not a threat. Black is the change down. So if they take the change, it's equal. So probably they are going for something more. They have three pieces in the attack. Please notice, we are outnumbered here. White is outnumbered. You have to notice that also. White is being... Okay, congratulations to Rohan. You found it. White is being outnumbered. So... Just like in other sports, like in soccer or basketball or volley, no, volley, no. Uh, which other sports? Hockey, right? Uh, it's important not to, to become outnumbered. If there are five attackers, you should have at least five defenders, you could say. Or in, in soccer, it's usually better to have one more, right? Uh, two versus two, it's very dangerous in soccer. Uh, but in chess, it's, it's often okay, two versus two. But right now, we're basically saying we have three versus... Yeah, one and a half, maybe. Um, the pawns are not good defenders in this case. So anyway, let's uh, check with Rohan, our only winner on this occasion. Please go ahead, Rohan. What did you do here on this occasion? Queen d4, that's right. We're talking about two things here. One, uh, looking at the whole board, looking at the whole board. If you make the mistake of uh, looking only at this sector of the board i'm afraid that you will not be able to find a solution you need to look at the whole board and secondly uh, consider also the opponent's king i i wrote a course by the way about defensive play so i spent a lot of time uh, on this kind of situations and uh, one thing i noticed uh, going through thousands of examples was that very often the attacker's king is also exposed for one sim sim simple reason one simple reason they have brought a lot of pieces to the attack at at the other player's king which by simple geometry means that those pieces will also be far away from their king right so it's it's fair to say that there might be some chances for a counter-attack if your opponent is sending all their pieces towards our king because the kings are usually not very close to each other so all right what rohan noticed here is that black cannot play queen h3 this was black's uh most important threat okay great uh, sartak i hope you like it uh, like the course uh, yeah i hope you uh, you enjoy the course so this is what uh, rohan noticed that now we are back to this method this idea of defensive exchanges yeah if you don't remember this here by queen exactly defensive exchanges here we are again this is one of the best tools for the defending player as you can see white didn't win the queen but they win the game because, yeah, now there is no fun anymore, right? Without the queen attacking. So, uh, queen b4, that's a very clever move. What uh, black would uh, play in that case is probably king h7 just to be clever and sidestep the check in advance. This means that white's queen, to, to continue with this business, they will have to play queen f8. Maybe on some other occasion this would be a problem because we're not around anymore with the queen. That's why, for instance, the computer likes very much this kind of move. I call this, by the way, the king move, no? The king move. Yeah, we will come to that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, don't give away the solution, hell. No. Don't work against me, please. Uh, the king move. Yeah, the king move. That's what I call it. We talked about this in the past, right? The king move. They can also say, you can say the preemptive, the preemptive king move. When you, we, we move the king 
in advance. There are some points to this. If you move the king in advance, you get more flexibility in advance, sorry, in advance. This means that we get some extra flexibility um, next turn. So in some other position, this might have been winning because we had something going on on E1, for example. White's queen is not there anymore. We commit white's queen. But in this case, it's not really like that. Uh, they don't have a good way of, of uh, exploiting this. I think the best black can do now is just to go for the perpetual here. Uh, I think both knight moves lead to perpetual, right? I can do this and, of course, white will go back. But we could also give check like that. And I think unless you really want to risk your life with king f2, I think you should just go up instead. Yeah, king f2 seems completely unnecessary. Well, never say never, but maybe, yeah. Can anyone see this? What's, what's going on? Uh, should we just take on? Wow, Tr tricky, <laughs> tricky position. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I get. I have a bad feeling about this, but maybe you can take like that, and you still have an attack coming up or something. Yeah, I can't really see this. Yeah, but uh, yeah, with no reason to enter this, of course. So, yeah, that's the solution. Now everybody wanted to play Queen E1 here. I understand that, of course. That's a natural move. Queen E1 is very natural. But as some of you already found, there is a forced mate here. So, okay, because I want you to look a little at attacking play also. Here we go. Try not to look in the chat. Try not to look at what uh, uh, L sent to us. So I'll give you just 10 seconds because I think some people will look and then you won't have time to, to add the moves, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Good work. Most of you found this in less than 10 seconds. Congratulations. Uh, we can ask uh, Marcus. Please go ahead, Marcus. What was your solution here? Aha, uh -huh. knight and uh, queen, queen and knight, that's a good team, we usually say. And uh, on this occasion, uh, an extra knight doesn't hurt. Uh, how do you call this mate uh, the, that Marcus is about to produce? Do you have a name for that also in the US? Maybe it's the smothered mate, but some special smothered mate. You know, very beautiful. Doesn't come up very often. At least I was never fortunate to, uh, to carry out this mate, but... It's uh, good to know about it. I have seen a few games where it, it indeed occurred. And it occurred in this game. So, yeah, double nightmate says Happy Pawn. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, maybe we should call it like that. But I can think of other double mates, by the way, Happy Pawn with two knights. This is probably not the only one, but never mind. We know what we're talking about. So, Queen E1, that's a gruesome mistake. The problem is that Black's threat was not knight E3. That's how I understand all of you who said Queen E1. You said this because you didn't want me to play knight E1, right? You didn't want to lose your your exchange, but uh, that's a small price compared to getting mated after the sneaky move queen h3 and, and then it's mate. So actually, that's the big threat. If you just play a random move here, like let's say uh, a5 or, or something, if you play any random move, it will play queen h3. If you ask the computer about this, it will also tell you that knight g3 is winning, of course, but it's because the computer loves to repeat. So he will just tell you this variation and, th and then he will do it again just to show who is the boss, right? <laughs> So queen h3, that's the killing, that's the killing move. Aha. Uh, and for that reason, we have to do what Rohan said. We have to go for, for a counterattack here. After knight h4, we go for queen b4, counterattack. So please, these two things remember. No, one, look at the whole board. And two, don't forget about your opponent's king. There might be a chance of carrying out an attack at their king also. So actually, if you have seen this, there was a second solution that nobody said. Uh, somebody said, uh, nobody said bishop c4. But uh, this is something on the topic of giving back. Yeah, I can, I can take the, the moves away from you, Marcus. Yeah, no, no problem. I can do that if it's, if it's annoying for you. Giving back material. That's still possible here. Because after queen h3, what would white play? Yeah, exactly, Brian. Yeah, smartest brain here. Brian saw this instantly. Queen takes it too. We give up the whole queen, but we get some pieces in return. And I think this is still pretty defendable. Black is better, but we can probably still hold this. We're actually not down material here. So, for instance, if there was a pawn on c5 or something in the initial position, if you had this position, but the pawn... Yeah, you see what I mean, right? If the pawn was on... If this pawn was there, for instance... Uh, let's see if I can get this right. If you had something like this, then you should definitely... Oh, sorry, I think I made it with black smooth next, like that. Yeah, so if you had this position, I'm, I'm pretty convinced that this would be the only move. And then you would give up the queen like that. And you would hope for the best. We're back in the chapter about uh, 
the process of elimination. Yeah, even if this is bad for us, we don't have any other choice. I mean, we have a past one also, so we might have some, some chances here. Any, any questions on this uh, position or do you think we can move on? Uh, was there anything else to this? Or we, the only survival chance, exactly, hollow. That's what we're talking about here. So Queen before, exactly, that's our only chance. Go for a counterattack. And it's funny that my last example, uh, it's actually about the same thing. Yeah, that's strange, but strange things happen, no? Bishop e6, look over. Oh, sorry. Uh, I didn't see that message, uh, Troy. Let me come back then to, to the position. Bishop e6, let's see. Knight f4, bishop e6. Very interesting. I see your point. Aha, uh -huh. you're preventing queen h3. All right, what would happen in that case? I guess this is uh, one problem, right? Maybe I could actually carry out my my second threat this time. I can take your rook, and then I think I'm taking your bishop. No? Maybe. No? Something like that. Or, or is there something better than that? Yeah, I think that's the problem here. But nice try. Nice try uh, by Troy. Bishop e6. Trying to bring the mobilization. No? Trying to bring the bishop to the defense. Yeah. Not, not a bad try at all. Yeah, unfortunately, black had two threats, which makes it more more dangerous. Aha, yeah, bye Southak. yeah, see you next week, bye-bye. Okay, let's take the next example then. Uh, let's take the next example. So, looks familiar, right? Aha, it's actually the same example as some of you have noticed. So, you will have to figure out how should white continue, but I don't think it will be very difficult for you. So, let's see if we can get this right. Uh, let's see here. Can I get this right? I'm, I'm struggling to do it, but I think I can do it. Yeah, all right. You get only 25 seconds. <laughs> You're right, right. You're right in this example. I'm very sorry, uh, Connor, but I don't think that will work. But I, I might be mistaken, though. Yeah, we will we will talk about this. Uh -huh. I don't think that will work this time. Um, I have something else going on here, Connor, I'm afraid. Another, uh, what do you call this? Puzzle rush, mate. Aha, the king move. Bravo, hollow blade. We have a fast thinker here. Please go ahead, hollow. You're a quick learner. Okay, great. I run out of time. Yeah, no problem. I didn't predict it would be the same. Yeah, I'm very sorry. King h1, that's it. The king move, the preemptive king move, the computer's favorite move when you retreat the piece in advance to see their cards. Unfortunately, if you go for queen before on this occasion, there is a little problem with this. I will give you only five seconds for this mission because I know you're very, very strong in tactics. So you get only five seconds. So you better be fast here, okay? Kirotori L008, Troy Boy, you are the three winners here. Please go ahead, Kirotori. Uh, most people wanted to repeat moves, but um, yeah, it's better to give mate, right? You see the pretty mate? I cannot take like that. I get mated. And if I go down... Yeah, those knights, no. They are real monsters, no? Real monsters. So, yeah, puzzle rush. For mess up the move order. That's a nice way of putting it, uh, Marcus. Yeah, I would call it a more elegant way, flexibility. Black is simply keeping different ideas here. One idea if the queen leaves might be to give this check. Another idea, of course, is to play out our favorite plan with with a fancy mate and so on. So the problem for white is that they have to do something about different uh, threats. And for that reason, this is the best move, king h1, because now there is no issues with checks on the g file. Knight f2, we can just come back. I don't think they they did not profit from this, right? I think king... Or is there some problem here? Yeah, very confusing position, right? I'm thinking that maybe we could actually carry out this uh, defensive... Uh, sacrifice here and, and white would be so so okay. Aha, uh -huh. queen g1 is better, knight f2 is a blunder. What happened? Did we make a mistake here? Uh, what did I miss? Knight f2 knight is a blunder. How can knight f2 be a blunder? Oh, that's a, that's a joke or, or what? Oh, that's very tricky. Yeah, this is not a mate if, if, if that's what you mean. Uh, what was that your point? Uh, whoever said this. Yeah, I think that was some kind of confusion. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, not everything that glitters is gold, no? It looks like some kind of typical mate, but it's actually not, not that mate. This is the mate, right? Or, I don't know. Maybe you can find some other mate, like queen, queen check and knight f4 and so on. But yeah, that's completely unnecessary if you have mate in one, right? You shall not take the bamboo for the king. Yeah, I don't understand that comment. Too many queen checks. Yeah, exactly. 
So the right move here as uh, Kiro Tori was, uh, where is Kiro Tori? Was explaining, please go ahead, Kiro Tori. The right move is the preparatory move. We remove the king from danger. Aha, we play king h1. And uh, yeah, after that, uh, what black can do, of course, is to play knight f4. And you remember, right, Kiro Tori? You remember what we should do here? Aha, we're back on the same page again. Uh, still there, Kiro Tori? Exactly. Now we go for the counterattack. Aha. So this is what we looked at in the previous example. In the game, unfortunately, because this is this is the real game. The other one was analysis. In the game, white played. Yeah, you got it. They played. Of course, they did not take because of knight f4. Uh, but in the game, they played queen e1. And by now, I think everybody knows what will follow here. Should I, should I quiz you on this? Yeah, I can do that if you like, just to see who remembers the fancy mate. But I will only give you five seconds, so you better do this quickly. All right? Only five seconds for this mission. Let's see if I can get this right with the black pieces. Yeah. Here we go, right? No, that's not a mate. You can't mate me with queen d5 anymore. What happened? <laughs> wow, it got out of hand. I think we are confusing things here. Yeah, you cannot mate me with queen d5 if my, if my queen is on e1, right? More time. Yeah, but you should know this mate already. Who, who was closest? Should, see, okay, 15 seconds. Okay, okay, okay. No, no hard feelings. Yeah, let's do this again. Okay. Uh, I'll play out the moves. You have to see the different uh, ideas, right? And, and depending on where the pieces are. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. 15 seconds. 10 seconds, yeah, because we're almost finishing, right? Oh, you can't pre-move in the quiz. I see, I see. Uh huh. I see, I see. Okay, I think we will take one last example then. Yeah, we'll take one. Last. Okay, everybody got this. Uh, great work. Okay, please go ahead, uh, tactical magician. You can tell us what should black play on this occasion. Yeah, we'll do one one last example. Yeah, just to see the pretty mate. Aha, beautiful uh, domination by the black pieces. Aha, we're getting ready to mate them now. This is the threat. I have to cover that square in some way. Covering squares, important part of defensive play, but here it's in vain because black has this nice attack coming up. Yeah, I think by now, nobody will forget about this mate, right? We saw it so many times already. So, yeah, thanks, uh, Tactical Magician. That's exactly what happened in the game. This is the game. So it's not some, yeah, invented story or stockfish fantasy or something. This is exactly what happened in the game. And uh, please notice, this was the best move here, King H1. Very interestingly, if black tries to carry out their idea, then we have a fancy counterattack coming up with Queen B4. Okay, last example for today. I wanted to show you something uh, related to this, related to what we just saw. I won't give you any further information. I will just ask you to play out Black's best move in this critical position. Try to identify the threat as always. Try to detect the threat. And after that, try to take the right measures here in this game. Um, yeah, I think one minute will be enough, okay? By the way, playing white in this game, Argentinian prodigy, I think he's only 10 years old, very talented player, Faustino Oro. But uh, in this game, he could not uh, win. Um, yeah, Black went on to win here. Flores played a very nice uh, defensive idea. He used a very nice defensive idea. So if you play like that, Yugoslavian and chess turnip, I think you run into trouble. Okay. Have you detected my threat, by the way? Did you detect my threat? I think the threat is obvious, no? Yeah, if you play like that, Pikachu and Tactical and Connor, I think I will take it, right? I will take it and I will continue with my mating attack. Uh, L, you're basically finding the right way. Yeah, L, you can consider yourself a winner. Brian and Ryan the Greatest and JM Chess, you played the exact sequence that I was expecting. So please go ahead. Uh, Quoki also found it in the last second. Yeah, great. Please go ahead, Brian. What did uh, Black play in this game? The threat, exactly. The threat is rook takes g6, and here we are again. We use that preemptive king move, the computer's favorite, so that when they take, we are not checked anymore, right? So by now, we have more flexibility. Please notice the queen left. No, the queen left e4. What does that mean? Aha, we can play h4. What, of course, Brian noticed here. Brian noticed that. White can pick up this pawn, right? But uh, we're talking about the running king. The grass is greener on the other side. 
what would the black play here, uh, Brian, to make it simple, not to confuse things too much. Yeah, that's a good move. It's great for us that they cannot move the queen like that. Then they would actually pick up the rook on the other side, but they can't, right? So uh, no matter what happens here, you can see that the king goes to the other side and black should be completely winning. Yeah, exactly. Queen e7. Queen e7, I don't know. Maybe you can play that also. You're saying here, uh, Alg, after... Uh, at, by the way, I, I can indeed pick up the... I can, of course, pick up the rook also, like that. But then I lose my own rook, so it's it's not a big... Uh, investment for for white yeah queen e7 if you play that i think i would definitely consider to to take your rook in the corner so yeah i, I wouldn't exactly the king is seeking bluer pastures yeah good way of of putting it uh, oh aha so king f8 i think that's the only move here right because rook takes is coming uh don't even think about going for your own mate because i'm faster in this in this battle i think and also just for the record i could at some point move my rook and i can free square we're back in the making space chapter here again. So, yeah, there are no other good moves. H4, some of, some of you are saying to win time, but I think I will just take the pawn. And again, if you go rook queen d1, I think my attack is, is stronger here. But uh, yeah, we can analyze this if you like, but I, I don't have a good feeling for black. You can see that the black, the white pieces are, are getting here very close. They should just make sure that the king does not go for greener uh, uh, pasture. Past, pastures, that's how you say it, right? Yeah, so not a good idea, h4. The only good move here, as we are saying here, also don't play e5, please, uh, <laughs> because I can take anyway. So definitely only move here, king f8. But it's basically a winning move, or it's a very good move. Black is better in this position, because now queen d1 is suddenly a threat. In the game, they played queen e5, but then black had a good uh, end game here. I think they, they just traded on on e5. Yeah, they traded and actually they start their own counterattack with, with rook d1. And yeah, black was much better. You can see that. There is also something with h4. If the move, if the rook moves, I mean, somewhere. Yeah, maybe they will not go that. That would be silly, of course, to go to that square. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, they'll move the rook somewhere else, like like here. I think that was the game and he played h4 and now black had, had all the fun. But okay, that's a different story. But basically what I wanted to show you here is that the threat of rook takes g6, there was no way to like prevent it. We couldn't bring the queen to, to defend or anything. The only way out here was to move away the king, to, to move the king in advance. So I hope this makes, uh, makes sense. King f8 and we're running away. And as you could see, something about flexibility, right? Once they actually carry out their threat, the queen leaves the building, which means that we can carry out h4. But we couldn't really carry out h4 in the initial position because then the queen could just take it probably. I hope it's not too confusing. Anyway, I think that's it for today, guys. Thanks a lot to uh, Chessable, to Chess Dojo, to USCS, to Greg Shahadi. Thanks to everybody who attended today. Let's uh, meet next week at the same time and we will continue with defensive ideas. All right, thanks. See you, everyone.